Good morning, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And we welcome you to Mornings with Brian and Tyler. And today we are looking at the parables. Today it is Luke 13, 6 through 9. Tyler. He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that you can cut it down. All right. This comes on the heel of Jesus talking about repentance. Do you remember one of the things that John said about repentance, Tyler? Um, for the kingdom of Christ at hand. Okay. Was... He did. He did. He said that. But he said about repentance, he said, repent and bring forth fruit fit for repentance and so i think it's an interesting thing that in verses one through five go on ahead and read those tyler uh, or of 18 on whom the or one through five one through five yeah then they they were present at that season some who told him about the galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices and jesus answered and said to them do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. All right. And so what's the issue here? They're thinking that they're better than other people because uh, natural catastrophe did not hit them. And when I say natural, I'm talking about catastrophe in the natural world. Um, you know, can you be in the wrong place at the wrong time and a tower fall on you and kill you? It's possible. It's not probable, but it's possible. But people still even people who don't believe in God. They go, well, you know, that's karma getting you. What? It doesn't have anything to do with karma. They say, oh, it's karma. The only karma I recognize is the karma chameleon of the culture club of the 1980s. And I recognize it because that was a horrible song sung by people dressed horribly and and it was just it was terrible all right that, that's that's the only karma i recognize and say well what about the law of sowing and reaping oh okay now you're going to talk biblical principles yeah i recognize the law of sowing and reaping but i also recognize that you can sow a lot of good um but other people's bad can overflow into your life sometimes your own bad and that's kind of Jesus' point here. Do you honestly think that this tower fell on these people because somehow God was secretly punishing them? The answer to Jesus' question is no. And he flat tells them the answer is no. But how many people have you heard, Tyler? You know, they, they, they die in a horrible car accident, you know, and someone's like, well, you know, they must not have been living right with God. Really? Um, yeah, no, maybe it was the drunk driver that maybe some judge said, you know, for the third time, get into rehab and then, oh, I'm going to get, and he lets him walk three times with DUI charge. And the fourth DUI charge comes about after he kills five people. Well, those five people that died, they weren't, it's not because they were evil that God was like, I'm God, and I'm going to make a drunk driver kill them to teach them a lesson. Ugh. And then the drunk driver dude, he walks away with like three bruises. And that's Jesus' point. No one is any worse of a sinner than anyone else. You're all equally bad. Unless you repent, you're going to perish. And what's the perishing he's talking about? The fruit that is not born on a tree that was made to bear fruit. If it won't bear fruit, you're going to perish. Because 
and, and unless I'm wrong, Tyler, if you've ever heard of this, 100% of trees cut down are replanted and grow back 100% fruitful. Not because I've ever heard that. No. And that's the point of Jesus' parable. He's telling them there's a time frame on your repentance. <gasps> no, brother, don't tell us that there's a time frame on repentance. God will let us come back whenever we feel like it. We looked at the parable that involved the, the prodigal son right? The only reason the son was able to come home was he came home while he still had the ability to. What if an accident would have happened to him in that far country and he'd have been paralyzed? He'd have died in the far country. What if he'd have been so sick that he couldn't have walked home? His window, when he decided he, he better get home, he knew his window was about ready to close. That's Jesus' point here. Their window's about ready to close. Jesus is saying, you know, just like a tree, y'all, that ain't born fruit, the day's coming where you're fixing to be cut down. I've told, I've asked my father to give y'all a little bit more time. Now that I'm here, let me dig around. Let me fertilize you. Let me, let me do what I can to help you with the soil, help you have all the right conditions. And then if you still choose not to grow and bear fruit, the Father's fixing to cut you down. Not just the ones that had unfortunate happenstance. Or the wickedness of Herod. No. You're fixing to have an issue with the Father, and the Father's going to make you all perish because he's tired of it. Do you have some other thoughts on this one? No, sir. He said, bro, that doesn't sound like a fun parable. Yeah, I know. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to call us to, what's the R word, Tyler? Uh, is it repentance? Repentance. That's what it's supposed to call us to. So, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And Lord willing, we'll see you this afternoon.